Hey guys. Um, just jumping on here. Um, let me see. I've never done this before. So. There we go. Okay. Um, I just wanted to jump on here and um, share share some encouragement and um, just some tips and um, yeah, just some wisdom that I've accrued over um, probably the last 11 years and not knowing that I had um, an anxiety disorder and then just in the last five months um, after uh, figuring out that I did. After, um, so the last few days have sucked. <laughs> Saturday was beautiful. Um, got to do the majority of my grocery shop or, or Christmas shopping. Um, the Lord totally provided. I got like over a $350 check in the mail. Um, and I was able to buy Christmas for everyone that I wanted to, which is such a precious thing because the holidays for me, um, are a big deal whenever it comes to, um, gift giving. That's, that's the closest thing to my heart when it comes to holidays. And, um, yeah, so it was super precious. And after the year that I've had, it was just an extra, like, um, sweet kiss from Jesus. So Saturday was beautiful. Um, and then Sunday morning, I woke up. Just a little context. I am in the middle of a medication adjustment. And so serotonin levels are probably not the highest. Um, I know that withdrawal from depression medication can cause irritation and anxiety. And when you already have an anxiety disorder and your body's already on high alert, that's not fun. So I woke up and um, something that is helpful is mindfulness. And you may hear that and think, oh, that's new age or it's not. Um, I mean, it can be, I guess. But uh, mindfulness is actually like taking a step back and, and being like, okay, I feel really anxious right now. Am I, but it's not because I'm thinking about something. It's not because I'm worrying and it's not because there's actually something in my, you know, environment that's causing me stress. I have an anxiety disorder. My body is in a state of anxiety. So like, like taking back and assessing the situation from a reality standpoint and being like, okay, this anxiety, these thoughts or whatever, they're not real. Right. So base level, my body state of anxiety Pray, take a supplement, rest, whatever you got to do. But, but you know, just saying this is what's happening. This is reality. Okay, that that that's mindfulness. And um, so, operating from a from a place of mindfulness, um, you can be like, okay, go make a cup of coffee. Um, I'm gonna. I need to, I need a little more rest. So I'm going to lay in bed for a little bit longer and read a book. I'm going to go take some lemon balm and St. John's wort or whatever supplement you take and let it kick in and relax. First of all, you know, of course, pray, however that looks like for you. Um, yeah. So that's, that's the first thing. So Sunday woke up feeling my body as I'm, I'm moving around. I'm feeling like, Ooh, I don't feel good. Um, got out some, you know, I don't always do this, but I, I got an out of promise book and, and and just spoke some scripture over myself um, and asked the Lord to just minister to my body and, and take authority and all that fun stuff that we charismatic like to do. And um, but I my body continued to feel just really bad. Um, and prayer definitely works. I believe in healing. Um, I don't understand why it doesn't always happen. But um, I have confidence in the goodness of God, and that's not a cliche thing. I Jesus is all up in my life, and he moves miraculously. And so when the particular thing that I'm praying about, like healing, hasn't happened yet, I don't lose hope. And I know his character, so I don't, I don't get in a place of, well, healing, you know, must not be a thing. So, um, so I'm like, okay, am I going to go to church? What am I going to do? Go to church. Number one, step number one, the presence of God, the tangible presence of God, the love of God. God, He is He's who grounds me and He's who sets my world right again. So worship, the minute I walked in, worship music, 
I feel the presence of God. And I'm like, oh, my God. Like, I'm here. I'm okay. I'm going to be fine. He loves me. I can feel him. I can I feel his love like I'm alive, you know? So um, long story short, just throughout the day, my my it's like my nervous system is just on high alert. Um, <laughs> my dog is playing with her toy. Um, part of what OCD looks like for me, OCD is, is, is an anxiety disorder, um, period. That's all of the the thoughts and the obsessive thinking, all of that is generated by anxiety in your body. So, um, what that a bad day is, um, my, my stomach may be burning. Um, I feel very tender emotionally. I'm a little irritable. Um, if I'm around, around a lot of stimuli, it feels extremely overwhelming. Um, not loud worship music. I'm down for that, but just that I'm super, super, um, aware of people around me, constant thoughts going through my head. Um, just like, it's like you're in a state of hypervigilance and it's miserable. And I'm a highly sensitive person as well. If you don't know what that is, you can Google HSP. Um, but I'm super sensitive to outward stimuli and I'm super sensitive to what's happening with me on the inside. So I'm, I'm by the end of last night, I'm just miserable. I'm having a meltdown in my car, screaming the whole thing. Um, that doesn't usually happen to me unless I'm stepping down on medication, which that's a whole nother journey for me. I'm doing it safely. My doctor, I've talked a whole nother story, but, um, usually it's, it's medication induced, that sort of just absolute like emotional horror. <laughs> um, so then, yeah. So then today I woke up and was feeling a little bit better and, and, um, get up and dust myself off, keep going, whatever. Um, and today was hard. Today was a hard day. Um, just confronting some emotional things and, um, you know, relational conflicts and, um, Doing that with OCD is very hard um, because you, well, I can speak for myself. I have a tendency because you have this constant feeling of there's something wrong. It kind of depends on, I do believe that we have weak points. I think that we have soul wounds. I think we have things where we're vulnerable that the word needs to heal. And I think that's where OCD kind of gets its hook. Um, That's why people struggle with different things. At least that's my take on it and something with me an issue, an OCD trigger, or however you want to say it, it's relationships. It's, God, it's relationships. Like, just fear. Fear of the, 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 the core is fear of not being loved, fear of being misunderstood, um, fear of love being withheld, fear of punishment sort of thing. So in a conflict, I am hyper vigilant, hyper, hyper aware, like, I have to make myself and I can't, and I'm not, I'm not per time and I'm so new at all of this, but you know, I'll immediately, if, if I'm the same in a conflict and somebody is actually in the wrong and they're responding out of pain or they're not being kind or they're not communicating bravely. Um, and they're kind of putting it off on me. I'll have a tendency to just like be introspective because what if I'm wrong? What if they're right? What if my motivations are bad? What if, you know, I'm a bad person. What if I'm controlling? What if I'm manipulative? All of these things, like your worst fears, because I love people and I love Jesus and I'm pure hearted. So that's anxiety attacks. So, um, that's really hard going through relational conflict is hard anyways, but tacking anxiety disorder onto it. It's a crap show. And, um, praise God for pastors and good friends. So, On my way home tonight, I just kind of realized, you know, I need to reach out to some of my friends that, you know, have struggles with mental, mental health and that are are, um, not victims, but that are just in the process and in the boat. Um, And that really helped. And um, yeah, so I was about to um, take a bath and I was on YouTube and um, one of the YouTube followers or YouTubers that I follow, her name's Kat, name is Kathleen Light and she's a beauty YouTuber and she's beautiful and hysterical. And um, I think she's Cuban. I'm sorry, Kathleen, if you're not, <laughs> but I think she said that she's hilarious. Um, but she actually posted a video about mental health and guess what she was talking about OCD. And um 
you know, just, just for context for me, I oftentimes, I have some really great, I have, I have more good days than I have horrible days. Um, I have moments where, but most of the time, um, I'm still adjusting medications and stuff, but you know, a lot of the time I really feel like myself and, um, but all of the time I am aware of the presence of this anxiety disorder because I'm constantly saying no to 50,000 thoughts. I'm constantly seeing, or, you know, just feeling, it's almost like if you were in a, in a room surrounded with, um, like plated glass, like bulletproof and it's going everywhere, off everywhere, but it can't get to you. Like it can't hit you, but you hear it and you feel it. That's what it's like. It's like a constant barrage of negative, fearful, anxious thoughts. A lot of people would say that's demonic. I 100% believe in demonic oppression, but just from my experience, I firmly believe it's, it's anxiety induced. Um, and so whether it's body image something that I really, really fight and have to say no to do and just trust and believe and look at myself in the mirror and say, you know what, I'm beautiful. I love myself and that's my choice, but there's just, you know, that, or, you know, or what if, what if you said this the wrong way or, or what if this person's mad at you or, or what if you're really not beautiful enough and why your relationship didn't work out or whatever the garbage is. And it's not just a thought. It's like a, a it's like an, arrow and then the poison in it is anxiety and so i'm constantly saying no to these thoughts praise god for mindfulness and praise god that you know for resiliency and and realizing this is an anxiety disorder i either have the choice to be debilitated or or to recognize this for what it is and stay out of those who cycle so that's just some context for me so um so anyways, on my way, on my way home. Um, oh, so whenever I, I, one of the things that I, that I really um, have to say no to is that um, brokenness equals um, unworthy because I'm a hot mess <laughs> and I have been a hot mess this whole year because I've been through a mental health crisis and a breakup and all the things all at one time co plus COVID. Thank you. 2020. Um, is that because you're a mess, you are not, it's not that I don't believe I'm worthy of love. It's fear that the people around me don't believe I'm worthy of love. And that's friends. That's, you know, your, your, you know, dream of having a spouse one day or whatever it is. It, it's like, because you're broken and, and whatever other lie or whatever fear is going on, you're not going to be loved or whatever. And I, I know that I have greatness on the inside of me and I have a call in my life and I love to teach. I love to preach. I love to worship you, disciple. And this is like my dream right now. Um, and so whenever I opened that up and I listened to Kathleen Light's video, I was like, okay. Like it was just a really sweet reminder that this is not an uncommon disorder, which is stupid. And I hate that. Um, and I believe in healing and I am for God to heal my body. Um, but until that happens, like it's, it's encouraging that she's dealing with this, but this woman is beautiful and she is accomplished and she is successful and she's doing what makes her heart come alive. She has a, a husband, she has love in her life and it just gives me courage to, um, to have hope and to um, not listen to the lies that I'm dope. I, I just really thought, you know what? I'm, I'm, I've been feeling pretty craptastic, but I, I want to, I just want to get on and record a video. And, and I didn't really know what I was going to say. My brain feels a little scattered if I'm being honest because of the medication change and stuff. Like, you know, I love to share. I love to talk. I love to counsel. It just comes out of me. And so I just thought, you know, I'm just going to jump on here and give, give the, my fellow YouTubers who are struggling with OCD, um, some, some help, hopefully. So my first, so 
my first um, recommendation, I always tell people to read this book. If you're newly diagnosed, if whatever is brain lock, this is, I borrowed this from a friend of mine, I have to give it back to her and get my own copy, but it's brain lock. Um, this book is pretty old. I think it's been revised at least one time. It's from 1996. Um, it was written by uh, Jeffrey M. Schwartz. He's a medical doctor. Um, they have a, they had a, um, an OCD um, like medical clinic, I guess, in like study and support group and everything. Um, I think in, I think in LA, somewhere in California. Um, and it's actually pretty cool because it shows you, they did brain cells that have OCD and um, yeah, so this is, this is the brain of the person without OCD and this is the brain of the person with and you can see this part of the brain is like, looks like it's going to blow up. It's on like, it's overheating kind of thing. And that's really what happens. Um, so this book is beautiful because um, it, it, it has the, the four steps. Um, and let's see. Let me see if I can get to it. Basically, what it is, it, it really lays out in practical, clear terms what OCD is and what it's not. Um, and it gives you steps to get and stay out of the OCD cycle. You can Google the OCD cycle. And basically what it is, is um, like there's anxiety in your body. There's an ang anxious, fearful thought. You do, you want to do something to get rid of the anxiety. So, you do a, um, so it's like the anxiety, the obsession, which is the, you know, whatever the thing is that you're ruminating about, but you're obsessing over or whatever. Um, and then the compulsion. So it's like anxiety, thought, action. And, you, you know, at first when you do the compulsion or whatever, you feel better. But then it comes back around. And the more that you do the faster it comes back around until you're doing this all day long and you don't have a life um and you know this book it's just it's amazing it it validates the fact that ocd is a an excruciating mental health disorder but um you can and you can recover and you actually have the power to get and stay out of the OCD cycle. So I'm not going to go too deep into this, but read this book. It's freaking phenomenal. Um, I, I've, I've read, read a couple other books on OCD and this is my very favorite one. I would say, if anything, this is like a manual to recover from OCD. Um, and when I say recover, I mean to like live above and to not be over overpowered by and to not be debilitated by. So there's that. Amazing. Um, oh, my bed looks so crazy. Just ignore that. There we go. Um, so, so um, one thing I want to encourage you with is um, I do believe that everybody probably has um, maybe – but just from what I've, ex I've seen is that possibly people may have more intense um, oh no I'm, I'm, oh there we go um, people may have more a more intense experience of OCD than another person and I don't know if it's just because we're all different physically I have no clue um, but you do not have to be overpowered by OCD. And I would say the only reason that I am able to stay out of the OCD cycle for the most part is because of Jesus. Um, he's my firm foundation. Whenever I feel like I'm falling upside down off of a cliff, he created the cliff. He created the universe and he's my safe place. So um, my the very first scripture that ever um, really helped me 
is in James and it's James one. And it's um, my brethren count all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. So I would say this scripture is true regardless of where the trial is coming from, whether it's a spiritual trial, whether it's a physical trial, I think that it can be really easy to over spiritualize mental health um, or or miss um, misdiagnose it or um, label it incorrectly, which is where I think a lot of the stigma comes from. I did so many deliverance ministry meetings that some of them helped, and then but then it stopped helping because. I had, a, I had a medical disorder and I was exhausted and confused and it was horrible. So, um, but regardless, any situation in your life that you walk through that is challenging, if you lean into it and you lean into Jesus, and when I say that, I mean you surrender control and you do what you can do, you know, and you submit it to God and invite him to come in and to heal it or fix it or whatever, but also to just have his work in, in your life in the midst of it. Um, so if it's OCD, Jesus can use it to prune you, to um, bring out the dross in your life, the yucky heart stuff that you want to be healed from. He's such a good father. Um, he, I, he does not create sickness. He does not create disease. But the Bible tells us that all things work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. So, um, yeah. But this is the part. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask him doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that per let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord, for he is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. So to me, if you're looking at this apart from a person that has OCD, like somebody that does not have OCD, that would be like, oh, I want to trust God, but I want to, I want to be in control of this situation. And so I'm going to ask God for wisdom, but I'm going to do my own thing. Or I'm going to ask God for wisdom, but I don't really believe he's going to give it to me. So I'm still going to try and figure it out. So faith is the currency of the kingdom. And to me, faith and surrender are the same thing. Faith and trust are the same thing. So Basically, when we're not living in a place of trust and we're living in a place of self-sufficiency and self-protection and trying to do things on your own, you cut yourself off from the help of God. Um, and that's not a cold, like, mean thing. If you're not, I mean, he's a good father. And even whenever we're goofing off, he, he pursues us. But um, really, you can't apply this to OCD because, you know, he is a double-minded double -minded man, unstable in all his ways. How do you feel when you're in the midst of an OCD cycle? You feel like a crazy person, right? So um, I just, this helped me because whenever you have OCD, you feel like something bad is going to happen all the time. You feel like you did something wrong. It feels like impending doom. And that sounds very like dramatic, but it's true. There are people that are afraid that they possibly hit somebody with their car and they go outside and check it a, like a trillion times. They're not, you know, delusional and i don't say that lightly because delusions are a part of a mental health you know mental illness um i i i don't say i try not to say crazy because it's just not it's not a kind sensitive word but um but it's because the anxiety is so intense that you feel like you're going to die and so when i first um when OCD was first like triggered in my life, it was actually me getting saved is what did it. And so this scripture let me know I don't have to have all the answers. Jesus knows I'm overwhelmed. He loves me. I don't have to figure this out. The Bible promises me that if I don't understand something, I can give it to him and he'll give me wisdom. But here's the part. Um, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach and it will be given to him. So, without reproach. Um, another version says without um, finding fault. So he's not angry at you because you don't know. If anything, 
faith pleases God more than anything else. Actually, the word says it's impossible to please God. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So actually, when you're overwhelmed and you trust, you're trusting God, you're pleasing him. He's happy with you. Like he knows that you're struggling. He loves it when we ask him for help. Okay. So this is the first one. I want to give you permission to cast it. I want to give you permission to not understand and to not know what's going on. Um, oftentimes I, I hear like on the OCD, you know, support, support groups and stuff like that. You know, somebody's like, I just feel like sin and, and you know i feel like if i do this thing or what if this is sin or what if god's going to punish me what if he's angry with me blah 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 blah. what if i lost my salvation and people are like well just quote scripture and and, and go and find scriptures and do this and da, da, da. well yes the word of god is such a powerful tool but if you're using the scripture for to do mental compulsions you know um i got I don't know. I got angry. What, what if God's going to punish me? And then you go and look for scriptures that talk about it. Like you're in an OCD cycle. So this is not helping. So I would recommend that you not go and search the scriptures because it's a compulsion. That's the part of OCD that's complicated. And that's kind of why I recommend brain lock first, because you need to understand what OCD is. God is not religious. Like he knows you have an anxiety disorder. He knows you have OCD. So he's not mad at you for doing Christianity a little bit differently. <laughs> it's okay. So um, this is like a blanket scripture for intrusive thoughts come. Thing is going to happen. What if I did something wrong? What if blah, 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 all of your unanswered OCD questions. You can rest assured that God is going to give you wisdom Faith is the currency of the kingdom. So you actually, you surrendering and having faith actually guarantees that God's going to speak to you. So there's that one. And God's not angry at you for not knowing. Okay, so that's James 1, 5. We'll say 5 through 6 because that's the that's the, the main part of it. Um, and then the second one that helped me oh and i didn't write it down good job let's see here where are you here we go so psalm 55 22 cast your burden on the lord and he will sustain you he shall never permit the righteous to be moved and just for so the little OCD brain doesn't get freaked out. A righteous person is somebody who's accepted Jesus. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We receive his righteousness. We're not righteous because we're perfect or because we've done everything right. So you are righteous because you're a Christian because you believe in Jesus. So I'm just going to read it again. Cast your burden on the Lord and he shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. The, uh, well, the version that the, I think it's the Amplified Bible. It says, "Cast your burden on the Lord, and He will sustain you. He will, He will not. What is it? He will not. Basically, like He will not let the godly slip and fall, or something like that. He's not going to let you bust your face. You may think you busted your face. You may think you're going to die and fall, like your your life is over, because that's what OCD makes you feel like. But that's when faith gets to be bigger than your circumstances. So. This gave me permission again. I don't understand when I try and figure it out. My little OCD part of my brain is is um, on hyperdrive and overheating. I'm I'm thinking in circles. I can't come to a conclusion, and I, I'm because I'm so scared. I don't have to go through that. I really don't. Anything overwhelming that comes at me that I don't have an answer for. Um, if it's a legit, like, I don't know, it, you know, I would say if it's a legit, like, question or issue or whatever, you know, go to a trusted friend. If it's something you really genuinely feel like you need wisdom for, cool, go to one person. But if you find yourself in an OCD cycle or you recognize, you know what, this is an OCD fear, even if there may be some truth attached to it, this is OCD. You have full permission to cast your burden on the Lord. So when you cast something, the Bible talks about um, the elders in heaven casting their crown, their crowns before the throne. You think about it; they throw it 
at Jesus' feet. You cast these intrusive thoughts and these worries and these anxieties at Jesus' feet, okay? Um, so there's that one. And then the last one, ha, huh, no, okay. Okay, so there are moments where everything inside of me feels vulnerable, where all of these fears, you're not going to be loved, you're never going to get married, you're not beautiful enough, you're too broken, you're not emotionally healthy, blah, 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 blah. You're never, you're never, I'll just be real, one of my weaknesses is you're never going to get married, which is just stupid, and I don't believe that, but that's what OCD, anxiety, stuff tries to tell me. Um, or even just when I feel so overwhelmed, like everything in me feels horrible, and all I can do is just put my eyes on God. Um this helps me. It gives me the focus that I need. It gives me the courage to know I can trust God to be good. I, I, I don't know what's going on inside of me. I really can't even get in that place. Like I can't even like open up the top and look in there because it's a hot mess. <laughs> like I can't afford to get off into all of this crazy emotion and feeling that's happening in my body and in my, in my heart or whatever. This gives you, this gives me courage to know, you know what, God, I trust you to be good and to fight for me. The Bible tells us that surely goodness and mercy will follow after me all the days of my life. That's a promise. His goodness is chasing you down, even if you have an anxiety disorder. If, remember, faith is the currency of the kingdom. We come as children. So we recklessly trust God, we recklessly believe scripture and believe the promises and we watch the goodness of God be made manifest in our life. That's how it happens. Whether you have an anxiety disorder or not, OCD does not disqualify you from receiving the goodness of God. So here it goes. It says, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. So he's going to carry you through to protect you. Remember, remember mindfulness. I haven't always felt like this. I didn't feel like this yesterday. There's something going on in my body. I have an anxiety disorder. It's not my identity. It's not who I am. God's going to heal me. This is my reality right now. So take a deep breath. God says that when I go through deep waters, they won't overwhelm me. When I go through the fire, I will not be burned. He will be with me. He's with me right now. I'm in the deep waters and he's with me. And put your eyes on, on Jesus, you know, you read about Daniel in the lion's den and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace. This is your fiery furnace. This is your lion's den. They believed God. They were facing the flame. They were facing the mouth of the lion. They were anxiety, like a true, like an anxiety disorder makes you feel like you're going to die. Not all the time, but that when you get into that fear place or whenever you begin to say no and not respond to the obsessive thoughts and not, not do that anxiety starts to hit you, you feel like you're going to die or, or you feel like something horrible is going to happen to you. So take comfort in knowing that you are not the first person. So I've, I've genuinely been in a state of, okay, I had a fear that what if I blaspheme the Holy Spirit? And I, I finally had to get, and I, and for a couple of days, I was just stuck in an OCD cycle and it feels so real. It feels like reality, but I knew that I had an, I had a, knew I had an anxiety disorder. I knew there was a very strong possibility that my pastors were right. And my, this was not reality that I was really safe and I was really okay. And this was just OCD and I was going to be all right. But my feelings did not tell me that and my feelings were trying to convince me and we're doing a really good job that yeah you probably blast in the holy spirit <laughs> right so i finally got to a point where i was like you know what jesus if i blast in the holy spirit i'm going to serve you the rest of my life because i'm in love with you what what else am i going to do 
if I did it, well, it's done now, <laughs> you know, like you kind of have to get to that place. Think about Daniel and the lion saying, you know what? God can deliver me, but if he doesn't, I'm going to serve him. I'm going to trust him anyways. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I love what they said. Like, we believe that God can deliver us, but if, if he doesn't, like, we're going to serve God. We're going to believe him anyways. We are going to die not bowing our knee to Baal. Like, that's radical faith. So you know what? You're in really good company. And I firmly believe that God looks at those of us who are facing down OCD and we're choosing to trust him, say no. He looks at us the same way he looks. He looked at Daniel. He looks at us the same way he looked at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Like my kids are facing down the lions right now, and I'm so proud of them. So just be encouraged. You are in good company. Um, so I think that's all for this evening. That was pretty darn long. That's okay. Um, if you like these videos or if they're helpful, subscribe, give it a thumbs up. Um, again, I am choosing to not post these videos on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and just kind of want it to be a thing between questions or comments. Leave them below and, uh, yeah, God bless you guys.